it is to get through a game like this after you had an emotional game less than 48 hours before? I'll try. It's, uh, it's our job. You know, it's our job. It's like, who are we to find anything else in relation to the purpose of today? Just zoomed in to how do we get better and go into the playoffs playing good basketball. And I thought that tonight was probably uh, a C. You know, I, I give credit to Dallas. You know, Rick's done a great job of having those guys continue to play hard. Um, I, I have a lot of respect for Rick Carlisle in relation to, you know, what we did. It was up and down, but it wasn't really that that special to me in relation to our performance. Coach, with the win, you, you guys officially clinched home court advantage. Can you just talk about what that means for you? I mean, and so then you get to, well, you won, and look at what that room has done, and it's good stuff. You know, to win 50 games with two games remaining, to, to have, what is it, 14 now in a row? Is that right, 14 in a row? To secure a home court advantage, that is fantastic. And uh, th at the end of the day, that, that is what's most true. Our season to date has been uh, exceptional. Uh, the group has been fantastic. We continue to improve. Um, and I think, you know, those things are probably what I should be remembering the most. Could you pick up one thing that's been the biggest key to all of this success as you reach home court advantage? I think that there is a toughness in our group. I think that there is a defensive purpose to our group. We're going to play fast. We hope we make our threes. Um, but I think that there is, uh, there's two things. I think that there is a defensive belief that nothing else matters unless we guard. And, and we, have, we have sung that song. I've tried to sing it since I've been here. We, we, we continue to sing it. I think that they hear it. I think they hear it loudly. The voices that I hear in locker rooms and on the bench confirm that it's, it's, it's deeper than just my voice. And I think that any time you have a team that regularly bangs out 30-plus assist games, you know, again, we had 30, what, tonight, 32 tonight? You know, that, that, that in itself is a statement of, of, of sharing and caring. And we passed the ball. We really passed the ball. And if you can have that defensive disposition and if you can have an offensive identity that is selfless, then, then you get a chance to, to move, move along, I think, in good ways. Right. I talked about having a, being comfortable with the 10-man rotation before the game today, and then TJ didn't end up playing until the last couple minutes of, of the game. What was the thought process behind that tonight? Given Markel more minutes, you know, I think when you hear my words that you just mentioned at the start, it was, I, I want to, Jack, I think you asked it. You know, like, I want to test Markel Fultz. And if I give him more minutes, it's going to come at the expense of TJ. And it did. And, and you are right. Like, it did get into a deep where TJ came off the bench late, a little bit later than I had hoped. But the purpose was to test Markel, give him more minutes. So did you see what you wanted out of Markel in that extended role? Or? Um, in that little tiny sample size, it's always difficult to make sort of concrete, you know, assessments. I thought Markel was, was okay tonight. You know, he was okay tonight, um, but I, I, we got two games left, and, you know, you want to make sure you feel good about what you want to get done in a playoff rotation type situation. That remains still a little bit of a mystery to us, and uh, as it should, you know, he hasn't played, as we all know, uh, much NBA basketball. And so tonight here at home, uh, playing against Dallas, we, we felt like if we just played defense, we were going to be in good shape. Uh, I decided to rotate the team for those reasons. When you, that was, yeah. when you say that Markel was okay, I've heard you use that term to describe him before. What yeah. would make him good in a game versus okay? I mean, I can get into a thesis and coach speak easily. Um, it's, it's, and, and I don't want to. Uh, I, I feel that just when I feel the game offensively, defensively, those types of things, you know, it makes me give that answer. I think... Um, you know, maybe some of you felt that way too. I thought he was okay. You know, I wouldn't say he was really good and I wouldn't say he was really bad. I thought he was okay. And, you know, we all should be just so thrilled he's playing basketball and with the team and up and down 
and signs and flashes of brilliance. You know, this is why I'm the first pick. Everybody look at that. And he does that from time to time. It's with the extra minutes that I gave him trying to increase his fitness base while also seeing a little bit more of what we had, um, you know, without getting into too much coach, coach speak. That was my gut feel. This is before I apologize, but a two-part question here. A 50 win mark and the very least up a first down home game court for the first round for one for at least for sure. When you consider where this team was, the pieces you had to put together, the start you had, how much does this mean for this team for you? Where you're at, at this point. It means a lot for everybody, and you know it takes a village. Uh, you know the ownership group, the, the the front office, my assistant coaches. It it takes a village, and I think the the common denominator in any type of successful thing that I've studied is the consistency of good people, and I feel like the peripheral people forget the players for a second, the surrounding cast you know, is, is, deserves a lot of credit. You know, I feel like I hope that I represent a real-time example to other owners that, that can, can say this is the plan and we're really going to adhere to the plan and walk it down and not blink. You know, we, we have fantastic owners that have said something to me and they have delivered. We, we've got, you know, front office with, with Scott doing what he does that has stayed consistent. I got a core group of assistant coaches back there that has stayed consistent. That's what I take the most pride in. The fact that we actually have an organization and we are growing a culture. And oh, by the way, we won 50 games and we have a home court advantage and we're tied a record. That's true, but that is never really what's most on my mind. And, and, and that's what I think about those numbers. About these last couple games, what is the decision that you're trying to make? Is it that you're deciding whether or not you're going to be playing Markel in the postseason? I think everything's on the table. What I'm most deciding, what I'm most trying to do is win. We want to get 52 wins. We want to hold that third spot. That's what I most want to do. The, the, the peripheral things behind it, you know, you're looking at a bunch of different things, things that extend far more than just Markel Fultz. He certainly is a big part of it. But I feel like when you just get to the point, you cut to the chase, it's all about what gives our chance the best team to win in Atlanta. You saw what Atlanta did in Washington, D.C. They go into the Wizards and beat them and slam them back to eighth. That's not so good of a feeling at this time of the year. And so we're going down to, to Atlanta with the appropriate fear and respect that you know that I would say. And, and we want to win, and then we'll come back home and close out a year. And whether that influences, you know, how you play Markel or Rashawn, or you try this or that, you know, there'll be some of that going on, but it's all going to be derived on how do you win. Last one, guys. How much does your playoff rotation or your substitution pattern depend on your matchups um, in the first round and, and what they do with their personnel, and how much is it um, what you do with your personnel? I mean, it's all interconnected. Like, the, the, as I said to the, the pregame um, press, the, the man hours that goes into studying how you sub your team is incredibly extensive. And it might be the single thing that's most important. And it especially rears its head in a playoff. And so studying how they sub, you know, their tendency, who matches up best with their best scorers, you just weigh it all up. And, and fortunately, you know, I'm getting tremendous flashbacks of the 12 years that I had practiced doing this. And, and the world changes the second the last um, game is played. You know, the table is set. Then you start getting into scramble mode of, like, who are you playing? How are you going to guard them? We have been doing preliminary work for the past three weeks. We're good to go. But, you know, how you sub it is is really based on those things, those obvious things. And uh, it comes with a tremendous amount of study.